welcome everyone to uh, another round of conversations uh, with uh, Rana Dutt. Uh, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Brian Gavin. I am the president of Global Edit. We are a digital asset management platform focused on work in progress, asset management, and content distribution. Really excited to welcome Rana uh, to the conversation today. Uh, Rana, I'd love for you to go ahead and uh, just quickly introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rana Dutt. I'm a principal solutions architect at AWS. And uh, Brian and I have worked together over the years uh, on uh, content uh, distribution and media. Uh, I also uh, have been at AWS for five years, so I know quite a bit about you know, the breadth of services that we offer. So uh, pleased to be uh, working with you again on, on, on this webinar, Brian. Thanks so much, Rana. Uh, some few, a few housekeeping notes. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, for folks that couldn't join today, uh, we'll be excited uh, for you to take the opportunity to review uh, the content that we're going to talk about today. Um, one question to float out for anyone who is in the audience today is I'd love for you to put in the chat, um, are you thinking about content production and content distribution holistically um, from an e-commerce and retail perspective? Uh, if you want to go ahead and drop any of that feedback into the chat, we'd love to incorporate it into our conversation today. Our conversation today is going to be focused uh, on how personalization affects content distribution. Uh, in the realm of creative production, we know that everything we do from a creative landscape has an influence on the consumer. And really excited to talk with Rana today about uh, the types of technology that are helping us actually unpack that and realize uh, how our content deep in the creative space has an impact at the consumer. And so uh, I want to start by just opening up. When we talk about uh, consumer preferences, Rana, there's some specific solutions within AWS that are on the market that help brands and any type of content provider realize how their content impacts consumer preferences. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that uh, particular type of technology is? Yeah, absolutely. So we have rolled out a service called Amazon Personalize, which I think of this as a service that democratizes having access to a recommendation engine for anybody who's building a website or building a video on demand service. So uh, as most of you know, uh, and, and Brian, as I'm sure you, you know from the history of Amazon, is that very early on, you know, we had built in a recommendation engine where we would tell people uh, that customers who bought you know, product X uh, also bought product Y. Uh, so this was a way for uh, people to engage more with products and to increase buying because uh, they found products that would go well with products that they'd already purchased. So because of the, the popularity of this, uh, this recommendation engine that we built, we said, why don't we make this available to every business out there, right? Uh, if you could be a business with five employees up to a Fortune 500, uh, it doesn't matter the size. Uh, we made personalized in a way that's affordable to everybody and that you can use out of the box uh, to help drive more engagement and to improve on your sales. Great. So if I were to, to summarize that, Rana, personalized helps brands realize the impact that their content has on consumer preferences, consumer engagement, and ultimately personalizes there to help brands drive better engagement. Exactly right. Yep. And this might be on the web. This could be through email. This is any digital channel that we're going out and we're trying to reach our consumers through uh, the lens of the World Wide Web, our own website, uh, our our own email, any digital format for that matter. Exactly. So this can be used for personalizing campaigns uh, so that they're more targeted. This can be used for uh, personalizing uh, retail websites, for video on demand websites, any website that has content where you want better engagement on the website uh, because we're learning uh, both what users you know who are doing and users you don't know who are coming up, who are anonymous, uh, we can help uh, increase the engagement on, on all of these different media. 
Amazing. And so for the folks listening in from the creative side, I'm sure uh, there's a big head scratcher. A piece of technology like Amazon Personalized sounds amazing, but I'm deep in the creative side. I'm, a, I'm producing content within the studio. I'm, I'm a retoucher. I'm an art director. Mm -hmm. uh, and those roles and the folks that um, are probably listening today are focused on creative quality. And so part of what I want to unpack as our first topic of conversation today is why does an emphasis on work in progress, uh, which is what Global Edit is deep in the roots of, uh, why does work in progress help benefit content distribution? And so I want to open up the, the conversation, Rana, with you to talk a little bit about what is work in progress. And so I'll set the stage that Global Edit has deep roots in helping creative deeply creative brands focus on what matters and and what and what matters is getting the highest quality creative output and less about managing process and so our roots and work in progress means that you can go from the point of capture within your studio to produce e-commerce content or out in the field for an editorial shoot and you can focus on elevating that creative content through global edit and so work in progress for global edit means that the output and at the time in which it's ready to go to market, the time in which it's ready to be put in the hands of someone in marketing, it goes to the website is of the highest quality and done as efficiently and effectively as possible. How does, in from your lens, Rana, how does work in progress help impact what a piece of technology like Amazon Personalized can ultimately do to help reach the consumer for the brand? Sure. So suppose you don't have a final idea of what content in the work in progress is going to be the most engaging, right? So you're in the process of actually uh, formatting it, collating it, uh, sizing it for various media and things of that nature. The way Personalize can help you is that you can do sort of a, an experiment where you put up like a preview site, you put in the different contents that are still in the work in progress stage, and you let personalize uh, with, with that limited user engagement, let's say you do it to a limited audience, uh, they can then uh, sort of uh, rank, you know, they, they can give you uh, the interaction rate uh, on the particular piece of content that you've placed on the site. Uh, so you build the preview site, uh, you let a limited audience interact, and personalize will rank order the content for you. So it'll tell you which content was most engaged by these users. That way you can move from the work in progress to the final rendering of how you want that content displayed on your website. Really powerful in a, in a time that as someone who sits in a creative seat, we're being asked to produce somewhere between 10 to 20 X the volume of content to reach the demands of consumers. And we have a belief at Global Edit that it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to produce more content, uh, but actually you may need to produce more efficient content and focus on producing content and elevating content that is ultimately what is engaged by the consumer, right? So exactly. I'm curious to know a little bit about when the brands who have implemented Amazon Personalize how are they effectively taking that data to be more effective and to think about their creative standards? Sure. So one of our customers is Warner Brothers Discovery. They have a vast media library of content and movies uh, because of some of the assets that they own, like TBS and TNT. So um, when they implemented Personalize, for their video on demand content and also for their video content in general, they saw a 100% increase in response set, in, in, the, in the response rate using personalized promotions versus simply promoting their most popular items uh, to consumers. Um, so that's definitely one successful engagement that we had with uh, that, that movie, that Warner Brothers um, and Discovery uh, video project. Uh, and then in the retail space, uh, we worked with a retailer called Marco Polo that's based in Sweden. 
and they have a bunch of casual and, and lifestyle brands uh, that they sell to the public. So um, what, what they found was that after the implementer personalized, Marco Polo achieved a 56% improvement in product purchases uh, compared to the standard you know, uh, customer engagement that they originally had. So we see quantitative measurable results of increased engagement, uh, even increased retail purchases uh, with these kinds of domains. And it's not just retailers and movie studios. Uh, we have other examples of uh, you know grocery store chains, um, Intuit, Intuit, which is the financial services company, also using personalized and getting this kind of uh, increase in engagement. Amazing. And knowing the uh, intricate workflows of uh, theatrical and original content production and or retail and e-commerce, there's so many steps that go into creating that content. There is the initial captures, there's the editing, retouching, there may be talent approvals uh, through, the, through the lens of Global Edit, being able to support those talent approvals, uh, retouching, agency involvement. And so if we can focus on creating content that matters and that resonates uh, with our end consumer, be it that it's someone who wants to watch film or is gonna buy uh, the button down shirt that, that I'm wearing, those steps ultimately drive efficiency out to what personalized can do to drive that engagement. And, it, and from what I heard from you, uh, Marco Polo is, a, is seeing 50, 60% increase in the engagement on their products. And so what does that mean when you're trying to think about the creative content that you're producing. When you yeah, were, so, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say, yes, they, they were able to measure this because they actually um, had a, um, a, a way of tracking the traffic to their website. So they tracked it before and after to, to, to measure it. But, but yeah, go on, yeah. And so when um, I wanna just wrap up the benefits that Work in Progress has to distribution because there's a couple components that we need to take with us to measure how consumers interact with our content. One of them, which is so core to what Global Edit handles and is crucial to measuring user engagement, uh, we talked a little bit about metadata. Can you can you share what the importance is of metadata? And and maybe um, to be super uh, entry level, if you will, to the likes of metadata, just define what metadata is uh, as part of what matters to personalize. Absolutely. So there are two kinds of uh, users who will come onto your website or who will come onto uh, you know, your, your, your campaigns. I mean, one is sort of uh, an anonymous user that they're just kind of navigating your site. You don't know who they are. And the other is someone who actually is one of your uh, account holders, like if you're managing a retail website, the person is registered and you know, you know who they are. So um, for the, the, the latter case is easier because we already know who they are. So the metadata that we collect is sort of a user ID, right? Uh, the event, meaning what did they do? Did they check out? Did they just click on an item? What is the actual event uh, that happened there with that, with that engagement? Uh, and then the third thing is the object. Which object did they interact with? Uh, so in order for you to prepare your content for personalize, you kind of have to assign unique object IDs to every object that's on display in your retail storefront or in your video store. Uh, as long as you have those, those object IDs, as long as you have unique user IDs and you can kind of categorize the kinds of, you know, what did they do? Did they, did they check out on the shopping cart? Did they click on the object? Uh, that's, that's all the data we need. You're gonna send these events to us and then we are going to then send you back our recommendations. And the, the other component when it comes to producing content and a, and a huge uh, part about enriching content with metadata also is to the likes of building your dam and building a content uh, reservoir, if you will, of, of searchable assets. Can you share mm -hmm. a little bit about um, product data that is helpful to think about? Global Edit supports custom schemas, which is amazing because brands can build out their own um, 
set of custom fields about the information that they want to track related to the product or to the film, uh, if it's a Warner Brothers and, and Discovery case. So I'm curious, uh, fields like SKU or product name or product descriptions, are there certain attributes that we should be thinking about putting on our assets to help them be more searchable or more valuable uh, to the consumer side of the consumption? Yes, so uh, so to help you actually categorize and classify your content uh, so that they go into certain uh, buckets, right, that are searchable, we have another service called um, Amazon Recognition. So there you can feed all your images and videos and things like that to, an, this is another machine learning system, which based on based on machine learning that we've done in the past, we can tell you what's in your photograph or what's in your video. So uh, we can class, you know, these are, for example, travel scenes, uh, or these are certain clothes or t-shirts or things that things that get pretty specific, right? Uh, in terms of what you're trying to display. So recognition then uh, can help you categorize and add class classification labels to all the images. But in terms of what actually uh, people search for. There's another, I mean, uh, what, what we can do is we can rank order the terms, you know, the, the actual words in which you label these things that get the most engagement. And that way uh, you can figure out, okay, well, that label, you know, didn't get a lot of engagement. Maybe we should change the wording there a bit, right? So, so we can help you get statistics on how you labeled everything such that you know uh, you can you can increase increase the engagement. Amazing. And so, if a brand is coming with a set of attributes already applied to the image, those are as valuable as what something like recognition could help append in addition to the the static data that might be added in a system like Global Edit. Exactly. And you can even have custom labels. So you might be uh, in, in in a specific domain, like for example. You know, if you're specifically in a travel domain and you need specific vocabulary for certain things, you know, canals or, or you know, certain tourist attractions, uh, then you could add vocabulary to recognition and train recognition on the images that match your custom vocabulary. So that way, after you've trained it, you throw more images to the system. It'll automatically label them for you. Very cool. Last question and topic to talk a little bit about, and this is back to the the roots of the creative uh, production side of of our consumer readiness is when I'm trying to get content ready for Amazon personalized. Obviously, I'm producing a variety of uh, looks and angles uh, to support my product. Is is there a way that it's helpful to think about classifying the types of content that I'm producing? or even standardizing uh, the angles, side, back, front, detailed shot? Is there components of how I produce my content that actually matter uh, to personalize? Well, let's see now. Uh, you know, the, the retail, uh, basically the, 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 the retail platforms like Shopify and Amazon will have certain guidelines, right, for how you submit images to them and the angles and things like that. So you use those as base guidelines. But once you have formatted your Im images like that, then as I mentioned, you can throw them, you know, you can put it on sort of a preview site um, and measure the engagement through personalized uh, and you can do sort of A-B testing. So for example, you could have preview site A with images that are angled a certain, or shot in a certain way. And you could have another site B which has images angled or, or shot in a slightly different way. And then we can send, tra basically we, we, can, we can help you send traffic like 50% to A and 50% to B. And then tell you with this A-B test, which site got better engagement, right? So after you follow the guidelines from Shopify or AWS on, and, on uh, how you uh, format the images and how you supply them, then we can help you with the A-B test uh, to drive better engagement in turn to guide you in terms of how to you know, produce content that really engages. Very cool. And so to, to kind of close this section of the, of the conversation out, 
we see brands going from upload out of the studio in real time, accessibility to folks around the world. Remote work is still very much uh, uh, present in our lives and has kind of changed the, the production styles forever is global edit is actually getting you through initial art direction and selects your retouching version management and upon final approvals global edit is handling the file renaming the metadata enrichment and actually the image ordering to send it out to your shopify storefront uh, or any of the likes of of any uh, website technology that you might be using and i think that's that's so powerful to know that these were previously very administrative tasks, very high value tasks that someone within the organization has to execute on. And by Global Edit, Amazon, the likes of the technology working together to help really automate what is now sets of standards that a Shopify or an Amazon, a Cloudinary might have as how to receive content, how to order it, how to name it. Uh, and 360 actually provide you the insets insights back to think about how to optimize that process those are all the way up front to the creative process something that is so important to be thinking about as a brand because when you can move from capture to the distribution all within one tool set and you also can minimize the touch points that's time that's going back into thinking about how to elevate the brand creative standards how to reach the consumer better uh, how to have a better library from an from an asset management, you know, the role of a of a, a digital asset manager is is changing because of technologies like that. So, uh, Ron, I want to just kind of move on to the next area of focus, which is there's multiple dimensions of personalization. Uh, there's ways that personalization helps us understand the consumer, uh, but also helps us understand the content that matters. So, can you talk a little bit about what's effective uh, when we're getting into the realm of a solution like Personalize and what are the dimensions that we need to think about uh, when it comes to how do I know if this investment made a difference? Yeah, so some of the dimensions I think, first of all, I think you have to be ready to instrument the before and the after so that you really understand your ROI, right? When you use a service like this. Um, and one way to do this is, first of all, make sure you know what your uh, conversion rates are right? So in other words, after you put something in the storefront, uh, you know, how, how likely is it that someone then checks that, checks that out? So have those before statistics ready, right? Um, and then once you, know, once you know what those stats are, then you can let personalize loose on, on your site um, and then uh, and, and measure, you know, the increased traffic, the increased conversion rate uh, and, and, and other metrics uh, so that you you understand that you know the ROI was worth it. Um, you know, with, as with all services like Personalize, there are no long-term contracts. It's not some very expensive one-time pay client software. It's it's one of those pay for pay per use services, right? That makes it really affordable for every type of business, like I said, uh, to use it. Uh, but you should be you, you you should have collect metrics uh, before you start your personalization and then collect the metrics afterwards uh, to understand what, what your ROI is uh, on the service. I, I would also say that make sure that you know how to proper, properly reorder the content that's on your site uh, based on not just actual users coming in that you know who they are, but in terms of anonymous users as well. I should also touch on the fact that Personalize can give you statistics on anonymous users. You don't know who they are, but there will be cookies or some other thing that will help us, uh, you know, sort of track that user and tell you, uh, okay, this content was more engaging than this other content. Uh, so because of the fact that we work both for users that you know and users who are anonymous, because of that, I think Personalize actually will, uh, you know, result in, in a good ROI for the vast majority of, of customers that we have. And so when you're talking about the order of images, I guess, is it fair to say that we know whether the bulk of the visitors that view this button down shirt on my website, we know whether they're viewing the on model shot, the detailed shot, 
maybe the 360 video that I'm just starting to invest in as a brand? Yes, because you've labeled each of these media with different object IDs. So because you've done that, uh, you've instrumented the front end of your site to tell us which which specific object, the shirt or how, the way you've rendered it, right? Uh, which, which particular version of the shirt, uh, we can then give that precise information to the back end to give you back the exact recommendations. That That's so exciting to, to I mean, a lot of the the technology side of how we reach our consumers uh, is a little bit over the the creative mindset that I have. Um, the technology side definitely not, but for focusing on how to optimize creative content production, when we can run full 360 analysis of all of the content that I produce to go and support a product launch and ultimately the images that matter to the consumer on the website, it, it potentially means one, not all looks and angles and styles matter equally to every type of product, uh, but also that there's clear definitive ways to understand as a brand, am I overproducing content? Am I getting in and creating potentially wasteful content that matters or was that really elevated huge investment in styling out a new look on models was that investment worth it to me as an organization yes and we're going to give you those metrics because you'll know right away uh which particular angle went viral right <laughs> uh or, and, and and which one didn't have that much engagement so yeah people like you know what this this is one of those things people like engaging with with images and videos that are relevant to them, much more so than text and much more so than things that are not engaging. So the more engaging you can make images and video, the more engagement you're going to get on your site. And I'm going to throw you a curveball, something we, we didn't talk about uh, prior to this, but I'm curious, is there a specific set of content types that we know are best um, to produce as a brand that ultimately lead to higher conversion or higher engagement? Yeah, so I think that um, if there's a particular product, let's say you're selling a product and the product is a bit difficult to operate. It's not intuitive when you open it out of the box, you know, um, it could be an electronic uh, sound system or something like that. Having a video that shows the user how to operate it absolutely drives and get, drives the user to buy it because rather than just having that object sitting there and they don't know they're going to be afraid when they get it are they going to know how to operate it right so adding video as a dimension is going to improve your sales as a retailer for sure we have seen that we can quantify the effects of that and the same we see with the brands that we work with global edit is meant for any type of visual content photo video graphic design files and going in and working with brands and our bread and butter as a as a kind of dna is from a photography landscape and our push into video has been at the realm of it becoming a a, a status quo or a, a table stakes for a better word piece of content that you produce and what's so powerful is that with a solution like global edit your photo and your video have similar work in progress steps. There's an editing, there's a refinement, there's a retouching component of it. Uh, and that all can happen right through one system. Uh, there's definitely some very high grade specialized video platforms, specialized photo platforms. Global Edit specializes in both. And I think that's so powerful to be able to take the content comp and the comprehensive content that we need to reach our client, our consumer and to push it through a work in progress tool uh, together instead of having to kind of balance things at, at the end. Um, okay, I wanna, I guess this is uh, really exciting and gets me, uh, I guess, amped up to, to, to know that our roots in creative production and, and what we do within the studio matters to the website and the, and the consumer. And 
you know, certainly we know uh, hard at work as a photographer, a digital tech, a retoucher that yes, my, my content ultimately reaches the consumer, but I don't think I've ever had that way of understanding how engagement uh, differs across that. For brands that are deep in this and this is um, something that they do in their sleep or you're just getting started, what's the, the content readiness barometer? How do I, how do I know um, that the time is right and what are what's some of the profiling that you would say describes the type of brands who are thinking about this holistic 360 from point of capture to actually consumer? Sure. So several things. Um, first of all, follow the guidelines for whatever site that you're publishing on. If you're using Amazon as your storefront, to follow those guidelines. Uh, and then after that, uh, make sure that when you store your content, that you are able to label it and classify it in a way that's easily searchable, right? And that's where recognition can help you. Make sure you have object IDs assigned to every single object so that each object that your customers are engaging with are uniquely identifiable. And then um, you can create those A-B tests, like I mentioned, do a limited preview you know, do release one limited preview site A, re release B limited preview to site B, do an A-B test to see what's more engaging. Um, and then one of the final steps as far as personalize is concerned is to have your web front end developer uh, write a little piece of code such that it gives the metadata that personalized needs, right? Uh, it's not very hard. We give, we have, if they have a guideline, if they know JavaScript, all they have to do is embed you know the user id and the object id and send it to personalize uh, and then um, bit, just have the code be able to handle the recommendation results that that come back and then to be able to reorder the images right according to the engagement um, so so those i think are some of the most important steps in terms of content readiness for personalization so I want to talk about kind of two fundamental pieces um, within the content readiness uh, point of our conversation. One is we you mentioned storage, having a place that you can centrally store your content. So many brands that we work with at Global Edit, uh, Global Edit can be used in, in kind of a few different capacities. One is the work in progress component of our solution is so powerful. And so some brands decide to use Global Edit for work in progress. And then DAM, if you will, that the asset management component of it is something that is already in place. Um, and part a lot of what we hear is, well, creative has a DAM, marketing has a DAM, e-commerce has a DAM. And it seems like having this decentralized scope of allowing each team to manage their own DAM plays against this ultimate end goal, which is drive more sales by reaching consumers more effectively. Is that, is that, is that fair to kind of make a statement of? Well, here's how we can help that, right? Um, yeah. So Global Edit has so much engaging content over the years, and you have created so much engaging content over the years. We are so happy to have helped you distribute that in a way that is results in a very fast experience for your users. And, and, and I'll tell you why the cloud enables this kind of a fast responsive display of images. It's because in the cloud, you can put all the images from all your different departments into this centralized S3 storage layer that we have, right? So mm -hmm. S3, which scales to petabytes really, um, will enable you to easily upload all your content to one place. And then once your content is in S3, you can easily use our CloudFront Edge network, right? Uh, which is a content distribution network that's global. Doesn't matter whether you have users in Europe or Australia, they are going to get the same fast user experience because your images and content are now gonna be automatically distributed worldwide through our content distribution that we're through, through CloudFront. So that's another huge reason uh, to have your content in the cloud because it gets centralized and because it's easily deployed worldwide to the content distribution edge. And those benefits are 
you know, not to plug Global Edit, but automatically inherited and received by using a solution like Global Edit that's leveraging those uh, types of technologies and, you know, the, the investment that we've made with Amazon uh, and, and the infrastructure that we run. And so I think as, a, as someone who, you know, might be listening to this today or will listen to this uh, in a day from now or a week from now is centralizing content management and having your content that you deem work in progress and you deem finalized all together in one place creates such a more powerful way that the folks that they may be in creative, they may be in another team that are responsible for looking at content effectiveness, then are afforded that opportunity to look at, hey, how is the content that I produce that goes out to my website or 50% of the content that's deemed not a select and never goes out to my website, how do I produce that content more efficiently? The second piece on stores that I think so that's so important to come back to, and um, I'm going to kind of to break down object IDs could be uh, a product ID, right? We need a way to identify this shirt compared to a set of sneakers versus the set of pants and any other piece of product that I might share. Those attributes, those tags, ultimately are the metadata that we preach every day to prospective and current users of Global Edit because most brands, when we onboard them into Global Edit, we talk, we're talking to them about their current asset management protocols. Metadata is, is sort of a, an afterthought. Uh, it's, yes, we have, a, we have a PIM implemented, but our product information data doesn't make its way through to the creative assets that start in a work in progress state. And that's philosophically a huge component that we believe in Global Edit, that your product information data, those information tags, those product tags need to be on every piece of content, not just the content that goes to your website, but everything. Because if you can go back in a centralized place to have inspiration, to look at what you did last season, we're in a place of fast fashion and fast content and uh, content shelf life being so short that it may not be usable this season, but it may be next, or it could be actually that inspiration. So if you're a brand who's using a variety of different systems to store your content, think about how you can centrally store your content and, and does the solution that you're looking at have robust ways to support the metadata that you need to append, not just a, the 10 products or 100 products that you launch in the fall, but the tens of thousands of images that you're producing at the point of capture that, yes, 25% of that goes to comes to life, but 100% of it should have those characteristics added. The, the second piece I want to just talk about um, is, and this has nothing to do with technology, but is still such a huge challenge with every brand that we talk to, which is the silos that we operate in. And certainly, uh, it's totally fair to say, stay within your own swim lane, operate within your own capacity as an art director, a producer, uh, an e-commerce content manager. But is there ways that brands who implement personalize and go out and start to measure the content effectiveness all the way down to the detailed look versus the alt look versus the side, the side look? Are there operational cultural changes that are simple to make uh, that allows mm -hmm. everyone who's responsible and has a hand in touching the consumer. And that does mean the photographer. Are there fundamentals that you've seen brands adopt to help address some of the operational silos that are so strong in, within every organization? Yeah, I think that has to come from leadership uh, to say that, look, um, our goal is to drive better engagement. In order to drive better engagement, we have to collect some data and then we have to let backends give us some recommendation engines and results and things like that. It's got to come from the top. So when it starts to come from the top, then people who are creating like the photographers and then people who are building the website like the front end developers and then people who are collecting the data, uh, like for example, the data visualization people, the data scientists and data engineers figure out that they better be talking to each other, right? To make sure that they have a, they can meet the, the, the goal, right? Within a given timeline. So I think this type of thing, this modern way of working will foster greater collaboration, uh, but it's, but it's gonna come from leadership. But once, once it, once that happens, it's kind of magical. 
uh, because the photographer is kind of aware, right, that there's going to be an A-B test going on at some point. Um, and then, you know, the website developer is aware that the data, data engineer needs some data collected. So, you know, they better be able to reorder the images and things like that. So it's this combined goal this and the actual goal of personalization and more engagement that's going to foster greater collaboration between uh, different team members. I think that's so powerful. And if, the, you know, if you're in a, cre a creative role at an organization today and you haven't asked, hey, do we actually know what content that we produce and we spend blood, sweat, and tears to, to get to come to life? Um, if we don't know what's the most effective content, I think that if there's one takeaway that you just gave me encouragement to go out and talk to our clients about is have that conversation because I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's, a, it's an old saying, can you work uh, smarter, not harder, is deep in the creative realm, there is a ton of, energy and effort and collaboration and a, and a mass scale of people that go into bringing a campaign and a new product launch to life. And if we can actually focus on the content that matters, that, that's pretty powerful. That means that the organization can get be more efficient with its existing resources, uh, but it also means that you can spend more time on the creative that really matters, that, that we know from a data perspective, actually drives engagement and purchases and return visitors and all of those, you know, more complex questions that the the e-commerce team is probably think about. That as a creative, hey, maybe that photographer should focus just a little bit less on certain styles of imagery that they're shooting. Or hey, we should produce the video 360s while we're capturing our photo. Um, and is my studio set up that way to handle it? So this is, I think, a lot deeper than just, you know, having that conversation. It's how you can operate your studio, the, the types of content that you produce. So Rana, that's, that's pretty powerful to be able to take this data and solutions like Global Edit are helping brands look at their content from a 360 lens. And that's um, the last topic. I just want to open up a little bit about what does 360 data utilization look like? Um, for brands, um, you know, and you touched on the the Warner and Discovery success story, uh, Marco Polo as well as, what does it mean to to use data holistically or 360 across the organization? Sure. So data can benefit first of all your marketing organization because your marketing organization wants to know how to target consumers more, right? I mean, just a wide email blast is just not going to cut it anymore. You've got to target your audience. So uh, because of some of the services we have on AWS, uh, like Pinpoint and so on, that can gather this kind of a data. Uh, and, and we also have machine learning data that uh, can help with the marketing campaign. The marketing organization is helped by this. And then, of course, the work in progress organization with all the content creatives, uh, are helped by both personalized and recognition, like we mentioned. And yep. speaking of content readiness, Brian, uh, I, I should have mentioned that we also help with creating the thumbnails because once you've got photos up there, right, now you want thumbnails uh, for the, the smaller devices. Plus for videos, you want to reformat the videos uh, for mobile devices separately from how they're shown on desktops. So the So this kind of content readiness once all this content is on the cloud in S3, be it your videos or your images, we, the cloud can help with the content readiness. Uh, and 360 means your marketing department knows how to use it, your creative department knows how to use it, uh, and then all across the organization, like in your financial organization, you're able to quantify the benefits and the ROI of using these technologies. Very cool. And one thing I would, you know, kind of add back in again from a global edit perspective, those those thumbnails, we refer to them as proxies, uh, but those proxies are actually being generated for you automatically out of global edit and are uh, being used in real time from the brands today that are choosing to put that content directly onto their website. And, and I think that that's so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Rana, we're, we're starting to get towards uh, just uh, the 15 minute mark. I want to uh, just come back uh, a little bit to the, the customer stories. Um, can you 
share, I think the Marco Polo example is really interesting where, you know, they saw an uptick in, in purchase on their website. Are you able to talk any at all about, you know, how long this effort took to go to come to life? Uh, what was uh, the buy-in that had to be achieved? Can you share any more details for folks that, you know, might be feeling inspired now at the end of this conversation? Are there details of that case study that you can share to help the next brand get started and thinking in this uh, type of approach? Sure. So um, I don't have specific details of how long the engagement was. I do know that we engaged with their director of digital intelligence. His name is Stephen Sandler. Um, and he basically was the person who told us about this 56% improvement in, in, in product purchases. But we do know that this company, you know, they're in the casual and sustainable lifestyle brands business. Um, and they're pretty much on the leading edge as far as technical innovations are concerned. Uh, so uh, they definitely had a marketing campaign. One of the things that, that they, had was a marketing campaign that sent emails to several hundred thousand customers subscribed to their newsletter campaign. So it was really just not focused at all. And once they applied pers personalized to this email campaign, right, that's how they got the 56% uh, improvement. But then there are other companies, you know, like, like the Grocer app, uh, that, that that's a, the, gro the Grocer app is another company. They used this is an online supermarket and they use personalized uh, for grocery items and they all, they saw like a 17 percent increase in average order value uh, so we do have these kinds of use cases uh, i would if, if anyone wants to dive further in uh, just go to amazon aws amazon.com personalized slash customers and there's a bunch of use cases there that you can drill into great rana thank you so much um, there's a couple questions uh, that have come in, so I just want to uh, open those up to get your feedback. Um, the first one is uh, this brand, they're in the direct-to-consumer space, so uh, fully uh, e-commerce based and uh, looking for a little bit of uh, ways to navigate getting started. Um, how would this brand go ahead and get started using Personalize and, and getting the buy-in, I guess, from, from the organization? Sure. So um, if you already have content and uh, you then want to take the next step to find out how to, how to personalize uh, the, your site, uh, speak to your AWS account manager, right? So uh, you, you should be able to find out who that is. Uh, if not, you know, contact me and I can find out who, who, it, who it is and we'll be happy to, st to speak to you about it. Uh, if it's more about, you know, creating the content, for your website, speak to Brian. I mean, his team is going to help you with that. Absolutely. I think that um, is a, a, a little bit of a good way, uh, Rana. One thing that you and I talked about, because uh, with every uh, webinar that we've run, I think it's always, hey, we want to deliver more value than just listening to the webinar. And so one of the components that Rana and I talked about and we're really excited to offer to anyone that's listening uh, today is that if you want to conduct a content review, content review on the creative side, but also content review, uh, readying yourself for the consumer, would love for you to reach out to Rana and myself. Uh, we'd be happy to work with your brand to go through uh, an in-depth content analysis, looking at how you produce content, starting at the point of capture, uh, thinking about the types of data you have on your products and how you're readying it for your website. So again, if anyone uh, is interested in doing a content review, uh, Ron, I think it's very generous of you to to support that time, and it, it's something that within an hour uh, you can walk away with huge amounts of actionable items. Uh, the last question, Rana, and I want to be respectful. We're going to uh, wrap up a little bit early uh, today. The last question that came in uh, is thinking about ROI um, and what are the ways that personalized can be looked at to increase ROI? Is it is it purely a dollars and cents thing that we're going to, as a brand, increase our, our sales? Or are there other lenses of ROI? And I think we talked on a bit about a big one today. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to answer one of the uh, part of the question that the user or the, the person had asked, which is part of the ROI is you can produce more content more effectively. But back to you, Rana, I'm curious, what are the ROIs uh, that this type of investment within an organization can drive? Sure. No, it's not just in terms of dollars and cents. It's also in terms of time saved, 
uh, because when you have access to this many content preparation and personalization services, now you are absolutely offloading people who are spending time, like for example, producing thumbnails or classifying content and, uh, and, and, and working on ways to improve marketing, uh, you know, um, the marketing effectiveness. So, so it's, you're definitely going to realize an ROI in our saved as well. Plus there's an intangible ROI with your brand just becoming more powerful. You're going to get bigger mind share in the minds of people. Your brand is going to stand out uh, because you've become so much more engaging. Really awesome. Um, thank you for that perspective. Ron, I think two things I would add in is that potentially you can decrease ad spend uh, and other acquisition spend that you're using to bring potential consumers in because that again back to your point you have more engaging content it's not just about having a, a higher uh, shopping cart uh, checkout total but it's actually having that spend work for you more effectively and I would say at, you know at the heart of what we're so passionate about at Global Edit and the creative uh, user base that Global Edit is so focused on is that you as a creative team and as a creative organization have a better understanding about how your content that you produce and you work tirelessly uh, to do so actually has an impact on on your sales so yes it's about the hopefully as an organization you drive more sales uh, and your revenue goes up but there is a unspoken component which is creative is a very cre good creative content is very labor intensive and if you can focus on the creative content that matters, that's, I think for me, really drives the value home. Uh, one last question just came in, and I think this is important uh, because uh, if you're, there was the, the question's point specifically is being a small organization uh, is something like personalize a technology that we could, you know, invest in or, or afford. And so I guess I'm curious, is personalized meant for only the largest organizations or can personalized be used uh, from a mom and pop shop to the largest organizations? Oh, as I mentioned, yeah, it can be used from a mom and pop shop to the largest organization. If you go to our pricing page, uh, it is so nominal. I mean, it's measured in terms of cents, like, like for every 100,000 users uh, that you feed into the engine, it's like 37 cents. So you can imagine that it's just really a nominal charge for you uh, to use services like this. It's just pay as you go type of a thing. I love it. And and Rana, I would say if if you're the type of organization that is reliant on software providers uh, like Global Edit, we're investing in a range of AWS technologies, certainly the storage component, uh, being able to seamlessly distribute content. And we're very excited uh, to be able to start to allow brands to put content on their website directly through some of the Amazon infrastructure. So I guess I would say if if you're a brand who wants to focus on investing in specialized technology like Global Edit, uh, we're here to work with you and uh, Rana and myself want to talk with you about how to evaluate your brand and whether the brand is is ready to make that move. And I would say every brand has to make that move because it's only getting harder and harder and, and uh, more of a fight within the digital space to reach that consumer. Okay, Rana, we've covered a ton. Um, I feel like hours pass with you and I uh, in the blink of an eye. Thank you so much uh, for all of the wealth of the information you've shared today. Before we close out, is there any other final things you, you'd wanna share? I'm just gonna say that uh, if you have any needs at, at all in terms of anything we've talked about, uh, please find out who your AWS account manager is for anything that's on that platform. And of course, if there's anything that needs to, has to do with uh, preparing media, uh, talk, have, have a talk with Brian's team. Awesome. Rana, it's a joy. I'm sure we'll be back at it uh, soon again. To our audience today and to the folks listening, thank you so much. Please uh, feel free to reach out to Rana and myself. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Brian.